Hi, Sal. Today we're going to talk about how you can save 50% off on a Nile cruise. Yes. But, Go ahead. Oh, I'm going to ask you a question. All right. Before we talk about saving a bunch of money, what, what were you going to say? I was going to say the same thing. Okay. <laughs> I want to know why on earth would, you even want to, would somebody want to take a Nile cruise? What's the point? Oh, I think it's what you see. I mean, you know, yes, you could drag, take a bus from Aswan up to Luxor. I don't know how long it would take you. Eight hours, ten hours. It, it would be a while. But why? What's, you know, who doesn't want to go on a cruise? And this isn't like, you know, your massive ocean-going cruise ships. These are river cruise ships. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, there's no seasickness, no nothing like that. It's, it's very smooth. You're on the Nile. Um, there was a couple stories, so there was a main level that had the guest rooms and the restaurant and then there was an upstairs level that had the lounge and the outdoor lounge, we'll call it. Yeah. There was a pool also outside, wasn't there? I think there was a small one, yeah. Very small pool, yeah. but you know, it does get hot in Egypt, so yeah. I thought one of the real benefits of the cruise was the air conditioning. Yes. It was, it was, it was relaxing too, I mean, you know, you, you had, uh, there were, you know, two full days of cruising. You got to, there's a lot of sights to see. I mean, that's really why you want to take it. One in particular that uh, the Temple of Sobek in Hero, Heroes is the Crocodile Temple, which was very unique. So we were able to, we stopped there. I'll tell you about the docking. <clears throat> when we boarded and when you were stopping, you don't pull up to a dock. You can, but you probably get stuck there. So they usually pulled a couple of ships off and they would just go up against other cruise ships and a lot of those cruise ships weren't in use. I mean, tourism is down in Egypt. So out of the, you know, the hundred cruise ships they have, you know, they only have half of them in use or a third of them in use. So we would pull up and we'd walk through other cruise ships to get to shore and it's you know, a little eerie, you know, it's like, oh, yeah. man, I'd like to really walk around this and uh, see the empty cruise ship because it's just kind of sitting there. <laughs> Abandoned know? seeming almost, but yes. not really. Yeah. Actually, when we first met with our tour guide and found our, our cruise ship, uh, he helped us get to our guest room. Yeah. And then we left to go run around, drink some beer and, and goof off in Aswan. But then when we returned, they'd moved the ship. And we were like, hey, this isn't the same ship. What do we do now? We didn't know. Do you remember that? Yeah. No. You know, live and learn. Sometimes you have to walk through several ships to get to your ship. <laughs> yes, and always learn the name of your ship. So, because someone will always help you find it. <laughs> yeah, totally. Because people are helpful everywhere you go. Yeah, totally. So, so getting back to why would you take a cruise beyond just the sort of relaxing? They take care of you. They feed you all your meals. You don't have to think about it. It's you know like any cruise that you would go on. They have good stops. Going through the locks was fun. You know this temple was fun. They actually took us on a tour of Valley of the Kings. Yeah. Mortuary Temple of Hot Sputit. In Luxor, the Luxor Temple, and the I'm Karnak sure that's Temple. how you pronounce that. Um, well done. Positive, yes. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, you'll see a picture. You'll you'll definitely recognize it. I mean, it's you know, uh, Luxor is, as far as I'm concerned, uh, it was the highlight of the trip. So, but we're going to talk about that in Luxor. So, uh, yeah, our, yeah. Our first stop was at the temple. Of the, they call it the Crocodile Temple, and it was unique because it was. <clears throat> to two different gods. Usually a temple is just for one god, and this was to two, so it was very unique. Very, you know, t t looking at each other and stuff, it was, it was, it was very cool. And the crocodile, we really didn't see anywhere else. This was the one place the, the crocodile god, I don't know what his name is, but... <clears throat> The way we organized this is we booked, we booked a tour that included the cruise, so our tour guide was on the cruise with us. Yes. And the stops are stops that the ship is making anyway, but you, I guess you could do those things on your own. You don't have to have a tour guide to take you. You could just follow the, all the other people that are doing the same thing. Yes, you could. We, we didn't do Egypt as carefree as we normally do. Normally we just show up somewhere and we, you know, figure out how to get to that temple and this temple and we do it all on our own. So the cruise was a little unique for us. 
but um, it was it was good. Yeah, I liked it. We had a good tour guide. Yeah, a lot, of, it was a lot great. of history. I mean, that's something you don't get when you go on your own. Mm-hmm. There really is a lot of uh, history and you know why this and the different gods and um, some of the unique carvings that get pointed out to you like this is only here or this is very unique you'll only see it uh, occasionally so it's nice to see some of that. That's another thing that I wanted to ask about oh well besides just seeing the temples and the historic sites we saw a lot of countryside. Oh right <laughs> of course you're, go you're going up the Nile. Uh, fishermen, uh, there was a man a uh, little herd of goats and he had one of the goats and he was washing it in the river. Uh, kids jumping off docks into the river. Uh, farmers, a lot of sugar cane. Uh, and they had their little wagons filled with sugar cane. The donkeys were pulling them along. So yeah, a lot of stuff like that. A lot of abandoned boats uh, on the side. So there was a lot, a lot more of the, you know, rural life that you would not, certainly not see in Cairo or, right. um, you know, even in the major cities. So that was really neat to see. Seeing the other ships, one of them like made a U-turn in the middle of the river. It's like, oh, we forgot someone. I, I don't know why he turned around. <laughs> <laughs> but he just kind of stopped and slowed, turned around, started going back the other way. So, um, you know, it's really interesting to see. The life on the river, I mean, it hasn't, the thing about river life is it doesn't really change. Commerce takes place, farming takes place. Right. The implements change, but the, what they do doesn't change. Uh, anywhere you go in the world, if you, there's a river, there are people living by the river, and they're oh, yeah, shipping, they're, they're uh, farming, transportation, fishing, yeah, farming. It's very interesting. Yeah. We did see some high-end cruises, too, on much smaller boats. Mm. Um, <clears throat> you know, probably maybe a third of the size of us. Uh, but you could tell they were really new and, I think, much more expensive. Yeah. Didn't really look at that. So. Because we like to travel on a budget because we'd rather travel more. Yeah. I mean, That's we're, kind of a goal. Yeah, we were gone for a month, 16 days in Egypt, so mm -hmm. um, a lot of people will burn that in a week. <laughs> we don't like to do that. So. Was there anything else that you saw? Oh, the locks. Let's talk about the locks. That was really interesting. So they've dammed up the Nile, which is hard. I didn't even know that. Yeah. Did you know that before we left? Um, sh oh, sure, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you have to, dams are a source of power, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it ruins farming and, you know, there's a lot of other stuff, but you have to have power, so um, they have several dams, a massive one down near uh, uh, Aswan, and then mm -hmm. there's, there was one on the way up to Luxor, and so, yeah, you, they take the boat and you, they, you know, park it and they, you know, close off each end and they just start draining the water and the boat just sinks 15 feet and then they open up the lock and it goes on its way. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. It was cool because uh, there was a couple opportunities to interact with vendors who were not on the ship. Yeah. <laughs> these guys were, were coming up to the dock and they start opening up these towels and tablecloths and, and you know, they're, they're yelling and they're selling before we're even there. <laughs> and uh, once we got there, if you saw something, you'd, you know, point at them, what, you know, how much for that? And then, you know, you start negotiating and they would just throw them up, like we're three flights up and they just throw them up to you and you could, you know, take a look at it and stuff like that. So I actually bought a, a tablecloth. We've used at Thanksgiving a couple times. It's big. Yeah. It's a tablecloth <laughs> and 12 napkins and yeah. the method was he threw it up and then you threw the money down in a bag or yeah. something. Just use the bag, put the money in it, toss it down. So. Yeah. yeah, they were great. Yeah. They had a, they were very uh, assertive and fun to watch doing their their sales pitch from three. Oh yeah, there was a, eight or ten vendors down there talking with I don't know forty people on the boat. So it was really cool. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was just a tremendous experience. In fact, before we got to the locks, there was a boat that pulled up to right. the cruise ship, it tied itself off, and started throwing merchandise up. I have no idea, because, you know, we're not cruising fast, but we're certainly faster than this little rowboat. <laughs> and they threw a line around one of the um, cleats. cleats, and uh, we're being towed along and throwing stuff up and talking to people. And, uh, yeah, it was yeah. really fun. Yeah. It was quite an experience. It was very interesting, yeah. yeah. That was before we got to the locks. Uh, right, yeah, or just before. They were smart because they had the, took their opportunity before everybody... Yeah. had a chance to yeah. <laughs> get tapped out. <laughs> so then once we got to Luxor, we got to 
visit Valley of the Kings. So um, I'll give you just a quick rundown because uh, we actually went to the Valley of the Kings three times and this was our first day on this tour where we saw you pay an entrance fee of basically 11 US at the time. It gets you into three temples. So if you want to take pictures in the temples, you have to pay an additional 25 to take pictures in three of the tombs. And you're, I don't even, did he even go in with us? Did, no. I don't think he even, he didn't go in. So we just went in on our own, but the tombs were just amazing. This, the, the carvings and the paintings, um, we saw, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it here because I don't remember the. Your ticket only gets you into three of the tombs. Three, yeah. We saw Ramses the third, Ramses the fourth, and Muratah, son of Ramses the second. These were all spectacular. I mean, the carvings and the paintings. Um, as you know, you're, you're walking down, there's different rooms. Uh, one of them was like 180 meters down, so it's, it's you know, significant walk and just, uh, you know, different columns, these fantastic paintings. You can see boats where, you know, it's taken them into the next life and uh, the different gods. Uh, it's just fabulous. You'll oh, yeah. put some pictures on here. It was just, it's overwhelming. So It is absolutely worth it to pay for the photography ticket. Oh, yes. Because you want to take photos when you're there, and if you don't have a ticket, they will make you delete your photos. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's kind of a shame if, if it goes that way for you. The other thing is that, you know, I kind of got that maybe if you gave a tip to the guard, you might be able to get into more than three tombs on your three tomb ticket. Possibly. I don't know. I mean, they, they definitely <clears throat> will, they will always show you around. There's a couple of guards that work at each one of the tombs and they will show you around the tomb and they do that because they expect to be tipped. Right. And they don't expect a lot. They're generally, it's a, it's a small amount, a couple dollars. Yeah, we do, it's, it's either a 10 or a 20 pound note. Uh, I typically tip well, so I had 20 pound notes for everyone. But they also, they don't just, you know, walk around. But they'll point stuff out to you, you know. Uh, this is unique to this or, you know, uh, you know, a couple of areas where you stand here for a really great picture of that. So um, they are helpful as well. Mm -hmm. But they're also making sure if, if you don't have a photography ticket, they, they took the phone out of the woman's hand, delete your pictures, and he deleted them. So, it, and, uh, so you don't, yeah, you don't just get the, it's well worth it. I mean, when are you going to yeah. go back here to take the pictures? The way they organize it, too, is not every single tomb that is on that site at Luxor Valley of the Kings is open. Right. So there's 15 or 16 tombs that have been excavated so far that it could be. Uh, viewed, but there might be eight or seven or five that are open on whatever day you arrive there, and you don't know in advance what's going to be open. They typically rotate them yeah. because you're in there and you're breathing and a lot of that, and, and it is damaging to the tomb. So, right. you know, you're into these, and some of them have little air stuff going on uh, to help, but uh, they do rotate them. So, That's good, because we yeah. want them to pre be preserved. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, that is also where King Tut's tomb is, which right. we didn't see because we elected not to. We talked to our guide, and he suggested some of the others that we looked right. at. Right. King Tut stuff, you've, you've seen it in museums. I mean, it had, you know, a world tour, so I just thought I've kind of seen it, so I would rather see something unique, mm -hmm. and we did. Yeah. So... So yeah, each of those three were great. Uh, yeah, it's eleven dollars to get in, twenty-five dollars. Um, I guess that's it. And then we went over to the mortuary temple of Hat Shpatut. So it's in that big sandstone valley. It's got that ramp up the middle to the uh, second level. It's three tiers, and uh, just uh, in incredible. I mean, this was uh, built. There was a rumor <clears throat> that there was a passageway in here that took you over to the Valley of the Kings. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but that would be pretty cool because it really is, you know, that sandstone was on the other side of that is the Valley of the Kings. I don't know how far or how big the mountain was, but... 
I think there was a hiking trail. You could hike it. Yeah, you could go over the top. I heard something we about. We did not do that. Yeah, we didn't do that. We drove around. Yeah. So, and then the Luxor Temple, they had Sphinx lined up in front of it on the on the entrance. That was really cool. That's back on the city side. It's uh, right in the city. Right in the city, and then Karnak is just a little north of the city, still in the city, but at the north end. Yeah. And uh, and they were they were excavating a road between the two. It yeah, was, it was neat. you know a mile long, and they were it's you know obviously it was buried and and it had Sphinx lining the entire way, so we saw part of that. So should we talk about what uh, we did our, our bait? We got. <laughs> yes, that's true. Okay, so how do you save fifty percent on a Nile cruise? Right. First of all, uh, the four day three night cruise. You're only actually cruising for two days. Mm -hmm. So the first day you get there. They take you out and see things in Aswan. So we didn't get to Philae Temple on our own, and it was oh, I, you know, we missed that. You know, it's the one thing. But then he picked us up. Oh, we're going to go to see Philae Temple. I'm like, okay, great, because <laughs> you know we didn't get to it on our own. We had other stuff we wanted to see, so we were able to get to that. And then we cruised and saw the you know the temple on the way, um, Crocodile Temple, and then on into the locks and then into Luxor. So you can do all that on your own. Mm -hmm. So we are, we stayed in a house on Elephantine Island in Aswan and our host said, oh, are you going to do a cruise? And I said, yes, we booked one online. It was, you know, 350, I believe it was at the time, although it's up to like 425 now. He said, oh, you should just not you should just go on for an overnight because you're only actually cruising for two days. So you can do Luxor all on your own and you can do Aswan all on your own and just get on for two days. So it's half the price. Yeah. So plus you would not be paying for a guide. So that would probably even save you more than that. Probably. So you can just cruise Aswan to Luxor, see the two stops and do Luxor on your own. Yeah. So, you know, instead of spending an extra 250 bucks, um, it's not that hard to do Luxor. We'll talk about how to negotiate a taxi, where to go, that type of thing in uh, in our Luxor talk. But um, okay, yeah, yeah, so it's good. I enjoyed it. We used Emo Tours Egypt. Our guide's name was Mohammed. Yes, and he was very good. I I would recommend them if you want to do the whole tour set. Yeah, but I certainly am not unhappy. I did it. I just know I could have done it for. A lot less. <laughs> yeah, I'm very happy that we did it. I thought he was very helpful. Everything was well organized, and uh, yeah, they did a great job. Yeah, they did a, a terrific job. Yeah, and on these tours, when you stop, you are paying for your entrance fees and you know photography fees uh, and all that in addition to the cost of the tour. Mm -hmm. So it's not like that tour was saving us. He was very but, knowledgeable. Yeah, so that was great. The nice. history is something you would miss for sure. I don't okay. have anything else to add. This was a really informative and good talk. Thank you, Brad. Yes. I appreciated that. Thanks, Al. Oh, like, subscribe, comment. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it simple.